Hey, good afternoon, everyone. It's Steve with Real Progressives. I hope you've been enjoying some of the live streams that Aaron Fox has been taking from the Green Party rally in Detroit, Michigan. He's been just on top of it. It's been fantastic. What I want to do is I wanted to take a few minutes to discuss in between uh, his shootings some of the more important issues that we're facing right now regarding economics. And I know that most of you guys roll your eyes back into your head when we talk econ, but this is incredibly important right here. So we, you know, I live in an area of central Pennsylvania where there are nothing but Trump signs literally everywhere. Um, everybody here is a proud Trumper. They've got the goatee. They've got the kind of buzz cut in the back. They got the camouflage hat. They got the beer belly. They got the whole enchilada. Every stereotype you've ever thought of, they've got it. And it's no joke. They mean it. They believe it. But here's the thing. When you talk to these Trump people, the reason why they are so adamantly against uh, not just, you know, Mexicans or Muslims or this, that, or the other, but they genuinely believe these people are coming to our country and they're stealing their jobs. No joke. These are low-skilled individuals. They don't have college degrees. They're not uh, groomed for upper management. And they are directly competing with many of the immigrants that come into this country. So that when they look over there and they see these individuals from foreign nations that look differently than them, etc., they found a logical scapegoat that they can easily point to and say, that's why things aren't good for us. Now, why does this matter? Because when you think about why we have issues economically in this country, why those individuals, those blue-collar individuals, are struggling so mightily, and why they need to find a scapegoat to fix the ills, to point to the problem, to say, that's why my life sucks. That's why everything about my existence sucks is that guy right there. When you think about it, the reality of this is that there's not a single problem that we could not solve economically as a nation that would make it so that these people could lead a life that was dignified, that they wouldn't be struggling as badly, okay? Now, mind you, you'd still have belly aching, you'd still have bigotry, you'd still have all the small-mindedness that comes from being in an insulated, isolated area and not having diversity. Lack of diversity breeds a lack of diversity. However, when you think about what our government could be doing to supplement those individuals, to help those individuals, to find them jobs, to help them survive via uh, benefits as societal benefits, citizens' benefits, when you think about what could happen, ask yourself this, do we have a lack of things that need to be done or do we have a lack of cash? That's a huge chasm of difference there. If you don't understand what I'm talking about, let's break it down for a minute. Do we have a huge rash of bridges that are terrible and falling apart? If we do, then we have something we need to spend money on. Well, we know that we're not lacking money. So why is it that those jobs are going unfilled? It's not that the work's not there. It's that the cash isn't there. Well, the only reason why the cash isn't there is because our government isn't spending on it. Because it's not private industry's job to randomly go out and fix public bridges. They've got to be given a contract to fix a government bridge, a state-owned bridge. I mean, just look at the bridges, right? So what do low-skilled individuals do? They tend to hover toward trades. They tend to find trades because, number one, they can make a quality living. Number two, they can learn the trade relatively easily with an on-the-job type apprenticeship. And number three, it doesn't require them to get buttoned up into a tie. They can live the way they normally live, and they don't have to put on airs. They can just be who they are. So when you have these blue-collar type jobs, the only thing preventing us from doing them is a lack of government spending. Now, hypothetically, we have tons and tons of jobs going out there, shovel-ready jobs, real, honest-to-God, shovel-ready jobs, not the fake ones, the real ones. Now what happens? Now all of a sudden, Johnny Blue Collar, who is a Trumper extraordinaire, is suddenly working. He's got a great job. He's got good benefits. 
He's going ahead and taking care of his family. He's coming home. He's a little bit tired because he's worked a good hard day and he's happy. He goes out, has a beer with his buddies, goes out, watches the football game, watches the NASCAR race, whatever it is that he does. He does that and he does it happily. Why? Because we as a nation have not given out charity to them because they don't want the charity. No, we've provided jobs that need to be done. Real, honest to God, jobs that need to be done. So we're not talking about Mexicans taking over their work. That's the problem. Our government hasn't spent on the things we need to spend on. So those individuals are stuck competing for who's going to cut whose lawn, who's going to pick what potato, who's going to chop down what tree. And that problem will never go away until we, you in the camera, myself, etc., begin to really, truly understand what it means to be monetarily frickin' sovereign. Taxes don't fund spending, so Joey over there is not paying for Lakifa or Quentin or Emilio or uh, Punjab or, uh, you know, Imam or anybody else's Obama phone or jobs or health care, bottom line is our nation is monetarily sovereign. We can do it. We can end bigotry through economics. We could put a huge dent into it anyway. I doubt we can get rid of all of it. But we could put a huge dent into it if we understand economics. But as long as you guys continue to run around, we got to raise taxes, we got to raise taxes. As long as you keep doing that, you're going to keep getting blocked. And the bigotry will continue. And this is kind of what the people above us want. By having these identity politics, by being able to fight with one another, you are absolutely allowing them to retain power. Once you say, hey, we don't need the fighting. We don't need to worry about that. I don't need to uh, go running around lying, 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 freaking lying, that taxes fund spending. Because they don't. So stop saying it. Federal taxes only keep the value of the dollar where it is. Federal taxes do not pay for one single shovel-ready job. They don't pay for one single bomb. They don't pay for one single tank. They don't pay for one single failed war. There is no credit card. As much as I despise Bush for killing people, I don't despise Bush because what he did, even though it's the right-wing way, he went ahead and kept the economy going through warfare. That's right. He pushed money directly into the war machine. Now, you may not like that. I don't like that. I want to eradicate war. But he did not bankrupt our nation. He did not do any of that crap. Taxes don't fund spending. Stop saying it. Taxes only maintain and drive currency. They maintain the value. That's it. Don't ever say taxes fund spending again. You will be chastised severely. You are literally fueling bigotry. You're fueling death. You're fueling all manner of programs being shit-canned because how will we pay for it? And it's your fault. Every time you say, but my hard-earned tax dollars, you are funding bigotry. You, you, you. Stop it. Stop it now. So the Trumpers, okay, are out there hating on the Mexicans, hating on the Islamic people, hating on the this, hating on the that, because they're looking for somebody to blame for the shitty state of their lives. What they should be doing is pointing at the people that keep saying taxes fund spending. That's who they should be chasing after, and they should chase after them. They're the ones that are saying it too, though, right? They think they're hard-earned tax dollars, and then you've got the elitist Elitist progressives saying, our hard-earned tax dollars shouldn't fund the bombs. They shouldn't fund the tanks. Dummies. We got to stop that. We got to stop it. So anyway, I'm sitting there listening to family who's talking about their young nephew and niece who are talking about how they love Donald Trump. And I wanted to interview him and ask him, what have the Mexicans done wrong to you? What have the... Islamic people done wrong to you? What have any of these people done wrong to you? And I realized that it's just a matter of that's the environment they're in. That's what this whole area is. Harley Davidson plant down the road, the whole enchilada. It's all built on the back of red, white, and blue. These colors don't run, boy. So what are you going to do? Your only chance here is to really start learning about how federal financing works. That's it. I'll keep saying it. 
I'll keep getting the zombies running up against the wall, throwing themselves against it. No, you're wrong, you're wrong. The Federal Reserve, it's, it's a private thing. The Rothschilds, oh! But they won't sit there and actually tell me how it really works because they don't freaking know. But I do. I do. And that's why I get in front of a camera and talk about it with you guys. If I didn't know, I certainly wouldn't do this. I'd be like, shit, man. I don't want to talk about this stuff. It's now on the record, man. People are going to forward this stuff around. They'll laugh at me if I'm wrong. But I'm not. No, I'm not. Homie's right. I'm right as rain. And anything that's said otherwise is a lie. This is one of those things where I can throw the gauntlet down and say, I'm right. You're wrong. Come on board. Let me help you because I want to help us. This is not some ego thing at all. Trust me. I could care less for me. I don't need to be right. I just happen to be right. So what I'm hoping is that you guys will actually step up large, start learning economics, and take some time to realize the ramifications of every single one of your times where you actually ask for a uh, situation such as uh, well, we got to raise taxes to pay for health care. we got to raise taxes to pay for schools. we got to raise taxes for this. Your states might have to do that. Your states do have to do that until you learn federal financing so we can get our federal government to start providing block grants to the states so there's no more unfunded mandates. But we can get jobs for all these blue-collar folks. We could get jobs galore. Imagine, hypothetically, making telework and remote work a big part of our entire in climate change, environmentally friendly, family friendly work package. We could hire all those folks in Flint without bringing a bunch of Rust Belt industry back. We could. We could be hiring them for help desk jobs. They could have a, a, a friggin' DSL line to their house. They could have high speed bandwidth brought to the house, a computer, a phone, and they could be taking calls in a call center right there in their house in Flint, Michigan, without ever bringing any of these industries back. That's right. And all of a sudden, that place would come back to life again, just through remote work, just through setting up telework. All these country folks... We should be blowing the doors off getting broadband out to these far off places. We should be absolutely subsidizing getting cell towers to these remote locations. There should be no area that's not completely covered with bandwidth for people to be able to access information so that they too can partake in the modern era. There's so much stuff that we're not doing that we could do in an instant that would eliminate so much of the bigotry, so much of the stuff. But instead, you're going to go out there and you're going to yell at Donald Trump like he's the problem. He is a representative of the problem. He is the symptom. He's not the root cause. The root cause is neoliberalism and you people talking about taxes, funding, spending. Stop it. It's unbecoming to be so wrong. Anyway, this is Steve with Real Progressives, hoping you take a bite out of bigotry by stop saying taxes, fund spending. Learn economics, damn it. Have a great day.